KVUG Community Radio presents Local Business, Local Faces. It's Crescent City's Local Voices. This month's Local Voices is dedicated entirely to a conversation with Barbara Burke, owner and curator of the Gallery of Arts and Culture in downtown Crescent City. We'll also visit with many of the local artists exhibiting in the gallery. It's a special arts edition of Local Voices. But first, a word from this month's underwriter. For nearly 20 years, the Mail Room and Copy Center has been your convenient one-stop source for shipping and business services. Whether you're shipping across the state or around the world, the Mail Room and Copy Center can help your items arrive safe and sound with custom packaging and crating for UPS, FedEx, Freight, and the U.S. Postal Service. And their private mailbox rentals offer safe, secure, and reliable delivery of your mail and packages. The Mail Room and Copy Center also offers convenient business services from business card printing to computer rental. Their on-site notaries will even come to you. Family owned and operated, the Mail Room and Copy Center. Convenience is their service. We recently sat down with Barbara Burke, owner and curator of the Gallery of Arts and Culture, to find out just what the heck's happening in that old bank across the street from the post office. The Gallery of Arts and Culture opened several years ago with a partner, Michelle Crail. We had visions of having a wonderful fine arts gallery in Northern California, and we worked toward that, and we think we have it. Michelle has also Six Rivers graphic design, and her work became so busy for her that she's quit our partnership to work full time with her graphic design business. So I'm having it now and I'm having so much fun. I'm meeting lots of people in the community and we have travelers from all over the world who enjoy the local and regional and international artists work and purchase and take it home. So we hope we expand to, ex to share the, the joys and wonderful resources here in our community, the beaches, the lighthouses, all the expressions of art that people find in our area. In the artists I look for their potential involvement. I'm hoping that if they don't have a body of work, if their work is good or I consider it good, I like to know that they can evolve and develop farther and develop a body of work because many of our clients and patrons collect art made by, by some of our artists. For example, Rika Blue, who is a wonderful ceramist, she sells her work all over the world. And she, she's now selling very practical things like sinks, but they're beautiful sinks and people come from all over to get to have her make them for her, for them. And she, uh, she's very good. She makes very creative wall art and outdoor art. So we, we do sell a lot of ceramics of, of hers. I also look for, for work that can, maybe this is saying some of the same thing, but work that can sustain itself over time. Something that, for example, it may not be thought this way, but Camille Rose Garcia's work is timeless. Her, her books are going to be highly, highly collectible in a few years, and her work is, is, is going to be world-renowned and very famous. So I'm, I'm thrilled that we can offer her books to people for very reasonable prices. There's another thing. I like that, that the artists are hugely talented and express themselves brilliantly and technologically through their medium. I also want their work to be collectible by people as as their own environment expresses itself through their collection of art and also people now have less money to spend and they want their money to count for something. So we like people to be able to have value in the work they purchase. Barbara was kind enough to invite several of the local artists exhibiting in the Gallery of Arts and Culture to come in and talk with us about their art. We begin with the woman who built a bike. My name is Elizabeth Carter, and um, I practice Sloyd, uh, which is the Swedish practice of making train, which is practical everyday items, which would be cups for outdoor use, train wear, which is spoons, knives, and forks uh, made from wood. Uh, they're lighter, they're stronger, 
and they fare better in really, really sub-zero temperatures. But sloid is much more than just making a tree. Sloid is also utilizing wood for other purposes. Um, this bicycle is a 1898 Chili Ohms, my interpretation of J.D. Stebbins' bike that was built in 1898. The Stebbins' bike uh, was an indoor, his very final bike was the uh, indoor bike. It was an indoor track bike. It was built for Red Oak. The difference between this bicycle and his is that he used phenolic and cotton for his lugs. And I've used hemp fiber fabric uh, cloth, 16 ounce, with West Systems 205. Um, this bicycle in particular is probably the stiffest bicycle I've ever made and ridden. It's an incredible performing machine. I build bamboo and wood frame bicycles, 19th century style, anything from a Pedersen Dursley to a Chilion to a Penny Farthing. And um, they're joyous to ride and they have a place in this world as a renewable product. My name's Chad Gagnon. I'm a, uh, an artist blacksmith. Got started about nine years ago. Did it only part time because I was still working my day job until so I retired last year. So now I'm kind of full time. Uh, this is my first uh, piece that I'm really proud of. I uh, pretty much told myself a long time ago I'm not going to put anything out that I'm not really proud of. So I'm not prolific in terms of cranking out a lot of different things yet, hopefully. <laughs> um, this, was, this was a project I did basically to demonstrate some joinery that I learned from Daniel Miller, who's one of the finest blacksmiths in the country back in North Carolina. Uh, I took a workshop from him and learned some of the joinery here and then uh, needed to do a demonstration of some of that. And that this came out of needing to show the joinery. So the joinery being things like the like the uh, the bands here and then the way yeah, it the, slips the, in there. The wedges hold this all together through this collar. The uh, up there is I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a hanging. It hangs from the slip joint. Mm -hmm. That's something that uh, Daniel had in one of his pieces when I took his workshop. And it, it struck me as a really pretty unique piece. How long does a piece like this take? This took me weeks and weeks, mm -hmm. a, yeah. lot, a lot of tweaking because obviously things have to be level and straight up and down. Uh, this, you can't see it really, these little saucers here are, the rest of this is all steel, that's made of wrought iron which used to be a, uh, a wagon rim, wagon wheel rim. Uh, and the, the beauty of wrought iron is just amazing compared to steel, the texture that you can get out of it. So I'm hoping to be able to work a lot more with wrought iron. Photography. I take all digital pictures, but I don't do much enhancing of them. Of the, you know. And so this one was taken from an airplane window. And you know how they're usually the airplane windows aren't too clean. But I just pushed automatic enhance on my computer, and that cleared it up. So there's no um, manipulation or anything. And to me, it looked like a bear walking across the earth. My name is Cynthia Lala, and I make uh, precious metal clay jewelry, mostly altars. I, I'm wearing a few on me today. Um, it's a very intensive um, type of art. Um, I take clay, metal clay, and I embed. Um, uh, different um, artifacts inside the um, altars, um, but basically when I start the process, I take, I take a um, piece of clay, so precious metal silver, which is 0.999 silver, and I build each piece, each section, uh, separately. And then I um, slip the things, the pieces together, and then I fire it at 1650 in a kiln, and then I um, uh, figure out my design. Yeah, exactly. How did you get into this? We've come so far. I took a class, uh -huh. and uh, she had only one altar class, and um, I just loved it. I loved it, and I just have taken it to another level for myself.
My name is Nancy Ehorn, and I work in fused glass. And fused glass, the, the process involves um, a kiln to heat the glass, and by that, in that way, you put many small pieces of, of glass together into one cohesive piece. At that point, you can either use it as it is, or you can slump it to create shapes. But um, I guess I started this um, working with fused glass about uh, 12 years ago, the first time I ever saw a piece of fused glass. After I saw it, I wasn't able to sleep until I went and bought a kiln and took a, a class from the Eugene School of Glass. And um, I, I think that the reason that it, it attracted me so much, first of all, the way light bounces off of glass is a pretty magical thing. But um, with fused glass, you can put a lot of different kinds of glass together, from transparents to opal glass to, to iridescent glass to um, dichroic. And then you can make so many different kinds of things out of it, all the way from um, very functional pieces that you can eat your dinner off of, to um, art pieces that you can hang on the wall, or pieces that you can turn into jewelry to wear. So it's, it's a very um, flexible kind of art. And um, that's, I think that that's the reason I enjoy it so much, too, because I can, I can continue to do different things all the time. You're just, you're only um, limited by your own imagination. And everything that you see will remind you of something that you could possibly do. I'm Penny. And I'm Dick Fleming. Uh, in a previous life, we were both microbiologists. Uh, we retired about 12 years ago and came up here. About 10 years ago, Penny stumbled onto our stained glass technique, which is known as the mosaic glass technique. Uh, this is probably more like oil painting than actual stained glass because you use a solid background and put small pieces of color onto that solid background. Uh, this gives you the opportunity to have a lot more definition than you would if you used lead or foil as one would normally do. Uh, Dick does all the design, and I do all the hard work of putting the pieces in. Well, uh, but in spite of the uh, uh, splitting up the responsibilities there, we do have a lot of fighting, uh, <laughs> mostly about the kind of color that we want to use. Right? He's mauve, and I'm yellow and green. Well, I'm actually kind of blue and gray. But, um, <laughs> See? But if you put them together, you end up with mauve. Um, We've actually been doing this, say, for about 10 years. It gets us away from the problem of dealing with lead and with the heat associated with the, the soldering iron and the toxins and stuff you have associated with the overall technique. Uh, we've been showing here at the gallery, gallery for about two years. Uh, Barbara's been very generous with letting us use her windows. <laughs> uh, her lighting here is actually the best in town for this kind of work. Um, we do do um, once in a while something for people on the side, but primarily we don't like to do custom work because it simply takes too long to do the work. And that's who we are. End of story. I'm Janine Vick from Brookings, Oregon, and I'm a watercolorist. I've been painting pretty much all my life, and I recently got quite serious in the last few years, and I have a varied interest. I love animals, I love old cars, so a lot of my paintings show that. This is my ram. I love wild colors, as you can tell, and then I like to paint old cars, and I tend to go to car shows and lay on the ground and take the bumpers and the shiny parts, because that's where my interest lies in showing all the reflections. I also like to paint flowers and people and anything that intrigues me and I usually have a little bit of a different slant on things. So that's my story and I'm uh, glad to have you enjoy my art. Well, my name is Lloyd Kirkpatrick and I've been in Crescent City about uh, 15 years now. Came up from uh, San Diego and uh, primarily, uh, well, as a commercial artist. I was uh, in calligraphy and lettering design and uh, so a few years ago, well, uh, the public uh, really doesn't respond to calligraphy too well. Their eyes sort of glass over and they don't know really what they're looking at. 
what they do kind of relate to paintings, mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. bad, or indifferent. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so um, in the last probably 15, 14 years, I've been primarily painting. Started out in acrylics, and in the last few years, I've been doing oils. At first, I was intimidated with the idea, but actually, they're very easy to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so, these are a couple of recent examples. My name is Mike Tompkins. I'm the bull guy here. Um, it's one of my chief pleasures in life has been working with wood. Worked with wood all my life, and intend to continue working with wood the rest of my life. I hope to uh, die with a bowl gouge in my hand. Um, as you can see, I like to do interesting shapes and forms. I like to work with whatever indigenous woods I can find in this local area. Most of my woods either come from trees that I've found in the forest that were already fallen or from driftwood that I find on the beach or that other people find and bring to me. And so that's, that's where everything that I have is salvaged wood. I don't cut trees down in order to make any of my pieces. Um, I like to use um, things like turquoise that people have brought to me. I have a brother-in-law who loves to bring me turquoise from his desert trips. And so I've incorporated turquoise into some of my pieces where it fits well. Um, and I like to explore shapes and forms. Okay, my name is John Parmentier, and, and I do uh, photos and music, but what I've got hanging here in the gallery are uh, some photos. This triplicate here is, is of a salmon that I shot. It's got, uh, using a macro lens, a picture of the head, middle, and tail of the salmon. I've got a picture of a redwood here, also a seascape. I do mostly nature photography, and I've been hanging in the gallery of arts and culture here. This is just such a great space. Uh, it really is. It's a modified bank, and, and the whole the whole uh, ambiance. It's a great place to have events. We've had a couple events here before, and it's just uh, it's wonderfully lit. It works really well during the day. Lots of light coming in from the outside, and it's got a good lighting scheme for the interior of the building also. It's a great place to hang art. What else to say? It's a great place. Gee whiz. Okay, my name is Rika Blue. I'm um, a potter. I do murals, houses, and buildings. I do um, a lot of vessel sinks for custom homes and a lot of a lot of pottery bowl sinks of different sorts. And I live up in Gaskin, California. Tell us about the, the, the process. I mean, we all know about throwing pottery and how difficult, even just when I see a bowl that big, that blows me away. But the, the actual art and the glaze and, and, and the, uh, the, the mosaic work that you do. Oh, well, the sea turtle, I use a latex process form. So I'll draw my design in here, and then I will put a latex on here, and then I will glaze the bowl. And then it's a, it's a couple step process, but all in all, the latex ends up being peeled off of it so that I have my raw clay where the glaze is not. And then I'll go in and I'll spray over the top of that to finish it out. With this piece here, um, this is all a hand cut mural, every piece is hand cut. And then for a lot of this, I used airbrush. I airbrushed my glazes on the gradient that you see here. Um, it was a very time consuming piece and it's ready to hang, it's ready to go. I love doing these things. Here we could tell, tell us about this. This is so vastly different from just, you know, the other things I've seen that you've it done. It is. It is. Uh, for a while I was doing a lot of these because I was just having too much fun. Um, this piece of wood I found on a beach. I loved it. I love wood. I, I'm a, I, I grab wood and I have piles of it. It's bad. It's a, it's a serious addiction I have. So anyhow, I just started doing handmade tiles. This is a hand card tile. Actually, they all are my little designs and silly things I do. Um, and so I just decided to incorporate the tile into the wood pieces. And um, it's just... It's a red-winged blackbird, and it's the first bird my grandmother taught me about when I was a little girl. And so it's kind of special because it kind of reminds me of grandma. I'm Gail Steelman, and I'm a nature and wildlife photographer. Um, these are just a small sampling of things that I do. These are um, mainly local birds. 
and, and uh, they're just real easy to find. You know, they're any time of the year when I'm not traveling, I'll you know go out to the harbor and see what's there. Um, I also do wolves, which I'm kind of known for around here. As I'm known as the wolf lady here in Crescent City. My yes, medium, I'm welded steel. Basically, I do some brass, but just pieces of it. It's just heavy plate steel. And then I spend a little time on, uh, on the exterior, on the finish. This one's like an acid wash, and, uh, and then I you know, usually coat the in interior pieces with a hand rub wax after them. And the coloration becomes, is we're done with heat. This and that, and I, that's about all I'm going to disclose. <laughs> Everybody's got their own uh, patina, you know. Uh -huh. I got into metal work. I, I, I studied. I was studying fine art, mm -hmm. painting, and uh, in Southern California, and, and uh, did a lot of pen and ink, charcoal, and then then I got had to have a real job, you know. My second, <laughs> this is my second love, my first love, but then I had to have a real job, and, and it was it <coughs> became a millwright, which is it's an old term now, but it's a you weld. Work with heavy machinery. I worked in the oil field. Up here, I came up here and worked in the sawmill. And I worked in quarries, fishing boats, and you pick up welding. And then with my art background, you know, just I started, you know, making little lizards out of files. You've probably seen those for, you know, like little gag shops. And then I said, hey, you could do some serious art, you know, and then. Uh, my name is Dora Swinger, and uh, I do watercolor. I also do acrylic, and uh, it, these pictures here are done with uh, uh, acrylic in a watercolor fashion. With the, you, uh, work with, you can work with the acrylic just like you do watercolor if you want to add the water and uh, do it real thin and, and money. And so that's what I do. And I was um, I, I like to, I'm trying to change over from being so realistic to being loose and spontaneous. <laughs> and because I, uh, I said, you can all, always go out and take a picture of something, but I like a painting to look like a painting, so not look like a photo, you know, so that's what I'm striving to do. How does one work on one's spontaneity? Well, you know what? You just um, you just start moving the color around and letting it letting it flow. And if you don't like it, mop it up and start again. I'm Mary Marie Weininger, and I'm a watercolorist. And I got completely tongue-tied just now. So tell us about tell us about this painting here, Ned, because you have several paintings here hanging in the gallery, um, right? I, I do. I work. I'm pretty much of a mood painter. I can go from pen and ink really tight to really loose and abstract. Uh, almost have to pull it back off the page. Um, this is kind of a start of an abstract, and then I went into a little more realism. A lot of my paintings are in process. Sometimes they're in process for 10 years. I will go ahead and lay out washes, and I kind of like to let the washes guide me as to where it's going to go. So I try never to have a preconceived idea when I'm working like this and like a couple of other ones over there. I like to just go ahead and lay the colors down and, and react to the colors and let the movement move me. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered this plastic paper, Lupo paper, which is plastic and slick and you lay the paint on it and it just lays there so you get a chance to manipulate it and move it and so it does it doesn't soak in at all it doesn't it does do not it just lays on top of the paper which is it's fun and it's frustrating mm -hmm. and it's a challenge because if you want any kind of realism you can wipe it out in one stroke you can put it back and wipe it out and it's just really fun paper to work with and uh, and what's so the name of the paper? It's called Yupo. Yupo paper. And it's it's just a... I, I find it just a challenge. And so that's my latest thing that I've been working with. Sometimes when I have an old watercolor that isn't working, and I don't know what to do with it, I will cut it up and maybe weave it and then put it into another watercolor. This one, I was cutting it up and I liked the way it was laying kind of up and down when I did it, so I decided to not only go up and down, but back and forth. Oh, wow. 
So I try to just go with what's whatever I'm feeling at the time. I'm Randy Rothman, and I'm retired in the school district, but I'm an artist and have been. I've been teaching classes in my studio that overlooks the Pacific Ocean for about five years for adults and children. I've had some of the same children for five years. Now they're going into high school. Uh, the medium that I started with is silk painting. And what it is is yeah, you lay out white silk and then you use a dye and you paint it very similar to watercolor. Uh, you can set it with an iron or set it in a special steamer for three hours that keeps the brilliancy of the, the colors. And for some reason, I'm in the mosaics. I, I, I just, it's one medium at a time, but then I can't let go of the other one. And so I've used beach rocks um, from across the street and I put motifs on it. Uh, and then there's the Lazy Susans. Um, I believe in functional art, art that, things that you use in everyday living, so, but, but it's nice to have it like be pretty. Brian Anderson is a brilliant photographer. He's highly collectible. These are his photographs on glass. He did a study of the Battery Point Lighthouse, and you will see there are various photographs of dawn and dusk, twilight, and almost dark. He also has a few pictures of the harbor while it was under construction from the tsunami. Tony Zybel is a highly skilled and talented fused glass artist. She makes plates, she makes designs of platters and servers that go together in triplicate to create the platter, the dipping sauce, the candle, in all colors, all sizes. She's, she's just lovely and her work is brilliant. She's collected by people from all over the country. Harley Munger has made these wonderful ceramic tabletops or wall hangings. They're designed and built for the out of doors. We're very proud to represent Lincoln Castroconi. His work is brilliant. He does photography and he likes to print his photography on aluminum. The gallery loves featuring artwork of other cultures. We have some Native American art. We have some beautiful hats with Native American designs. We have some beautiful hair picks. We have a bear rattle by Urania Hunter. The hats are by Penny Ginsaw, and we have some earrings and jewelry. Suzanne Peep is an artist who makes this extraordinary necklaces and earrings. She uses vintage jewels and new and modernly cut agates and stones and jade and beautiful crystals. She uses brass, silver. She has extraordinary jewelry and it's very priced very, very affordably. Alan Justice is everybody's favorite photographer. He's photographed every beautiful space in our region. He sells his photographers to people from all over the world. All his photography is on at, printed on acid-free photographic paper and matted with acid-free mats. His work is for sale from sizes to cards, 5x7, 8x10, up to large framed photography. He's, his work is beloved and people come from all over to purchase his beautiful work. Rick Heiser is a popular artist of taste and sentiment. His pictures sell very easily. He loves to photograph the beach and the moods of the beach and the sky. He also takes beautiful pictures of Aspen and everyone loves the pictures he takes of the harbor. This is one of a pair of Adam Hancock's impressionistic paintings. You'll notice that there are icons and reminiscences of ancient cultures and histories in his work. Pauline Holmes' impressionistic work is very popular. She paints redwoods, the Marin Hills, our beautiful coastline, the beautiful stacks along the shore. Cheryl Griffin makes beautiful lampshades and matches them perfectly with lamps. 
She uses bulk help from our local beaches and local starfish and all manner of marine animals to create her beautiful designs. Goretta L'Amour, everybody's favorite artist, illustrated this book, Tari, the Little Balinese Dancer. She lived in Indonesia for many years, and she and Pamela Nunsi uh, prepared this book. And the publishers called them and asked them would they edit and redo the illustrations to have it re-released in the fall and winter of 2013. And the book now is a bestseller. It's for sale at the gallery, and it's very reasonably priced, and it's for young people. A very charming story of a young Balinese dancer. This beautiful, exquisite garden gate was made by artists Steve Hodges and Steve Portzer. They designed and created and built it out of steel, copper, brass, and paint. Over time, the copper and brass will oxidize and become even more beautiful. Lyle Renfro was an artist, a potter who makes beautiful pots. As you can tell, everyone is unique and different from any other one. Highly decorative and highly collectible. He also makes small boxes for little collections. John Hewitt is every <laughs> Del Norte County in the region's favorite artist. He teaches here. He's a highly collectible, very well known artist in California in the West. He prefers watercolors and he teaches all up and down the coast. Valerie Tucker is an artist who loves painting impressions of the sea and of the coast and sea stacks. James Deshawn makes these wonderful walking sticks out of found driftwood. He smooths them and reshapes them to fit a variety of gates for those who love to walk in the out of doors. James Glazer makes these beautiful metal and wood sculptures for the out of doors and indoors. He's everybody's favorite outdoor artist. The Gallery of Arts and Culture is open seven days a week at 175 H Street in downtown Crescent City, right across from the post office. You can call the gallery at 464-4745 or stop in and say hi to Barbara and experience the amazing creativity of our local art scene. A very special thank you to all the local artists who spoke with us, and thanks again to Barbara Burke of the Gallery of Arts and Culture. That's it for this edition of Local Voices. We'll see you again in 2014.